This video is brought to you by World Press Photo Award winner Wolfgang Peter Geller and Sunbounce.com. Hi, I'm Tim Antoani. We're in San Diego, California today, and we're preparing to go out to a shoot in Borrego Springs, which is in the desert about two hours east of us. Uh, we went out to this location last week, uh, pre-scouted the shoot, uh, figured out where the sun is going to set and what kind of equipment we need. So uh, we put about 300 miles on the car last week in preparation for this shoot and we've got a bunch of gear uh, we're packing up. We rented a van. Uh, we have three different models we're going to take out there and we're excited to see what kind of pictures we can make. So we've stopped here, we're waiting for another model. We're in the Anzo Borrego Desert, which is on the south end of California. Just a little bit south of us is Mexico, and just a little bit north of us is our location at a dry lake bed out in the Anzo Borrego Desert. It's about 101 degrees out here, and we've got plenty of sunshine. All right, our model just showed up, so we're jumping back in the car and we'll be at our location about an hour. Let's go. So we've made it out to our location here in the middle of Anzo Borrego. We've got a dry lake bed as our location. We're unloading the car. We're going to build our sun bounce panels and I'm going to check out wardrobe, see what we've got for options on that. And we're going to pull out the surfboards and make some pictures. This is the California Sun Bounce Sun Swatter. This is a great tool to use. Use it all the time outside, especially when you're shooting in the middle of the day because you can get it over the top of your subject and eliminate that ugly afternoon light. Get your subject into the shade. We've got our overhead flat here block the sun off of somebody, which is great for shooting in the middle of the day. So we're going to set that down, get ready for our first portrait, fire up our strobes. Hi, I'm Monica. Hi, I'm Katarina. I'm Eric. And today we're going to go shoot with Tim. So I'm putting my subject in the shade of the softbox. I don't want the sun to influence this exposure. And then what I'm going to do with my sun swatter is see how we're getting some straight light on the ground. I'm going to actually bring it in on the other side of this and have my assistant hold it so we knock that hard light off from hitting the ground. This also works when you're not 
and the sun's up higher, you can park that sun swatter right over the top of your subject to keep the sun coming down. So I just wanna, I wanna control the light on him. I don't want the sun to do anything right now. So let's take a meter reading on that, ready? That's good. So we're at 16 at 2 thirds, we're at 100 ISO, we're gonna shoot at 2 50th of a second. That's gonna underexpose our sky a little bit, so we're gonna have this deep blue sky and then we're gonna bring the strobe in, pop it on them. So Chris, take half a step that way, good. Now I'm looking at my background, I'm gonna move over just a little because I want the mountain to intersect him at a certain point. So we're gonna do two things. We're gonna take a gray card reading. This is so I can color balance all my pictures later that are lit with the strobe from this direction. You gotta be careful you don't get any color bouncing into it. Like if your assistant's wearing a yellow shirt and they hold it sideways, you're gonna get that yellow bounce in there. Chris has a blue shirt in, but he's gonna hold it out from himself just a little bit so it doesn't affect it. Good, we got that. Then the next thing we're gonna do is Chris is gonna drop a coin just on the ground right where our meter reading was taken so we know where the model needs to stand. So we're pretty much ready to go, so let's uh... When you have your assistant stand in for your lighting test, you'll see that our, our model is a lot taller than Chris was standing in there. So step forward just a touch. I'm gonna probably have to back up just a little bit here. Go ahead and turn yourself towards that light. Yeah, that's cool. That's good. Back up just a touch. Okay, so Chris, you're gonna grab the sun swatter. Just matching up the shadow here on the ground of the softbox edge and the sun swatter edge. Just a little bit, that's good. Cool. All right, so you're gonna look right here. I've got this down low camera angle because I want my subject matter to look heroic. Now you have to watch this. If you have a heavy set model, this is not a good flattering angle to shoot from. But with athletes, football players, soccer players, I do it all the time. It makes them look larger than life. So we'll take a look. If we start shooting our model and they look a little heavy underneath the chin, take a little lighting change and we may come back up on camera angle. The other reason why I'm doing it is the way the mountains are gonna intersect his waistline. If I come up higher, they're gonna go through his shoulders. I like this low angle. I like the way the background looks. Doing great. Okay, now what I'm seeing is the shadow side is a little bit contrasty. So I wanna bring in a little bit of fill light. So I'm gonna grab another panel. I'm gonna walk in a fill panel. We a sneak over here with this, bit of a kite but you're gonna stand right here. Yep. Okay, I need to just try to keep the bottom pulled toward you. Sun's water uh, up and down and still knock it off of all of them. Can you get his whole body? It's good. I'm just gonna flip these poles around quick. Quick change, and now we have the silver side of this panel out. Get a little more bounce. On over this way. And let's get the bounce fill. Yep, let's do that. And I'm gonna have you run this direction a little bit. 
Yep, you're just gonna kind of jog. And let's have you um, take your shorts off so we just have green. Go ahead and have you come step over here. We're gonna go back to this. One technique I use all the time outside doing portraits is I, I go out, I take a reflective meter reading through my camera, and then I underexpose that by about a stop and a half. If you took a picture of your subject standing out in front of you in that kind of lighting condition, they'd be totally underexposed, just about a silhouette with a deep blue background. So that's what I want so I have my sky super dark blue, really dramatic. Then I bring the flash in and I increase the exposure to be normal for my ambient exposure as far as flash reading. And then the combination of those two things gives me something that the human eye can't see. You have that beautiful big soft box, flash fill, a little sun bounce reflector filling in the shadows with that underexposed deep saturated blue sky and it makes for a really dramatic picture every time you do it. So we had a good shoot out here in the desert today. Got a couple of uh, interesting th things happen as far as uh, not having the proper permissions, but we did our due diligence trying to come out here, get the permit and do everything according to the book, but everything doesn't always go your way. So even if you come out and scout the week ahead of time and everything, you just gotta make do with what you got. I still think we got some great shots with the time that we had. Um, the sun bounce panels worked great for doing some bounce fill, uh, both with the flash and with the sun from behind and I think we got some great shots today. This video is brought to you by World Press Photo Award winner Wolfgang Peter Geller and Sunbounce.com. <laughs>